Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On today's show we're going to talk about swinging streamers for big fish. We'll talk about tackle, we'll talk about flies, and we'll talk about technique. This is going to be a very technical show so get your notebooks and we'll be right back. Today we examine one of the deadliest techniques available to the fly fisher, swinging streamers. We first visit the Nipigon River for huge brook trout and fish weighted systems. We then will visit the Eagle River in Labrador and show how this technique will work with unweighted systems when Atlantic salmon is the quarry. Along the way we'll get some casting tips, strategies and equipment advice. The biggest mistake the average angler makes in this situation is trudging right into the water and going to the place that they, they think the fish are going to be or they got a fish last time they were here. But right now the water's running fast and it's a little cloudy. So believe it or not, the big fish actually part and move to the sides of the river to get out of the heavy current. So you must be observant to see if the fish are right there at the side of the bank. You may even want to try to use one of your streamers close to the bank and see if you can take one of these fish first. Then, and only then after you've tried it, move out into the current. Oh, the joys of sinking tips. Now what I'm doing is I'm casting to the middle to see if anything is actually active out there. I'm giving it a few twitches, extra jerks in the pole, and, and trying to give it a little bit of action as it comes around. And then as I get closer to the bank, then I'll strip it in. Now usually when you're working a streamer, you want to be out in the middle and cast to the banks, but we've had a lot of rain around here. The water level is up and it's not safe for me to go out there right now, so I have to make do with what I have, which is cast in the middle, swing it around, and work the edges along here. And this is, I believe, is where the fish are going to be holding near the edge. The Nipigon River is renowned for its huge brook trout. Watch as I join Randy Beamish and we swing some large streamers for these wonderful fish. Lots of times guys will strip it in fast and don't like to have a fish come up on it and swirl on it or something instead of basically when the fly's in the water, fish it as long as, you, long as you're able to. Get it out, let it swing. Okay. Oh, fish on. First cast in this area that Randy just brought us. We got a, a, a seam here from slow water to fast. 
And that first drift come by, all I did was nothing and brought it around and this fish just wham. There's no doubt about when you get the hit. Anybody that's into brook trout is gonna love this. Look at the rod going, look at the rod going, oh yeah. As you can see behind me, there's a dam and the water level is, is controlled by it. Earlier we had really high conditions and they've, they've since then dropped it down. And this is another big fish. It's another big fish, he's out in the water there. Yep. And we got him. Very good. It's not a, I guess the current was making me feel that it was a much larger fish. <laughs> well, it's a decent fish. What's about yeah. 18 inches? Oh yeah, 18 inches. Just don't want to keep them out of the water too long. And away he goes. I love that. Listen as professional guide O.J. McDonald gives us some casting tips on how to deal with heavy weighted systems. I've got on a five foot piece of LC-13, which is 13 grains of tungsten per foot. This is one of the fastest sinking sink tips you're going to find. The problems associated with big flies and big sink tips is they're very awkward to cast. A lot of beginner fishermen really struggle presenting their flies because quite often the fly will end up in the back of your head, it'll end up in a tree, or it'll be on the bottom of the river stuck to a rock. So you have to understand that retrieving this and keeping your fly off the bottom is important. So one of the tricks that I use to getting my line back out into the river is I'll pull my sink tip out of the water. It's called the 50-50 rule. It means 50% of your sink tip's in the water, 50% is out, and a basic roll cast will pull your fly out of the water and send it in front of you. Now, that wasn't a very good cast because I've only got about 10 feet of line out of the tip of my rod, five foot sink tip and a three foot leader. That's not gonna cover much water. So I will pull off about 20 feet of line and zigzag my rod tip so that I'll pull the line out of my rod while keeping my fly suspended off the bottom of the river. Then I can form a D-loop and cast that fly. It's just called line management, zigzag, whatever you'd like to call it. There's no fancy terms here, but it just keeps your fly moving, keeps it off the bottom, and allows you to pull 50% of that sink tip out of the water so that you can produce a nice roll cast. Again, the zigzag will keep your fly up, will pull line out of your rod tip so that you can make a good 15 to 30 foot cast and cover some more water. Yeah, I can see the structure we got now. Yeah. There's one. There we go. Fish on. Good man, good man. Way to go, Randy. Here, haven't we, where we got some room to fight it. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got lots and of... And it looks uh, like a pretty good fish. Yeah, it is. It's uh, got some weight to it. Good man. How did it feel when they hit, Randy? What was very, big... la very lazy hit it, come up and, and almost like it grabbed the uh, tail of the fly. And then it was a, a slack, it, like it come forward on it and then hit it hard. Oh, yeah. Look at the head shakes. Look at the head shakes. Wow. Yeah, it so, feels like a good fish. Eight weight outfit. Yep. Now, the, we just come past the point, so that's probably why that fish was sitting there waiting for the, for the bait to come by. Yeah, yeah, it just ambushed the bait. Usually indicates a good size fish. The, the smaller ones tend to fight hard and run, but they yeah. come up on the surface. Beautiful. Oh, look at the head shakes. Look at the head shakes, my goodness. Good fish. And we have that nice, very nice fish. Just the current yeah. makes it uh, seem a lot bigger. 
The nice thing about the well is the, is the fish is now going to settle down. We can handle them without hurting them, and uh, it's just an all-round great idea. Well, it's a 20-inch fish. 20 20 inch. Beautiful. Oh, I like it. Excellent. But what I've been doing, which is working very well, you feel the hit and you move the, the rod upstream like this. And that is your hook set. Now there's another hook set that they got and if you watch my hands, it is this. I got my line here. You pull back and move up. Again, I'll, I'll show you. When the fish hits, you pull back and move up. That's called a, a line, a line Stripping set, line strip set. Yes, pull back and move your rod upstream. And that'll set the hook tight. If you lift straight up, you pull it out of its mouth. So you want the, the fish has grabbed your, your fly, turned and started moving downstream. That's why the sweeping action puts it back in its mouth. If you lift up, you're gonna pull it out of its mouth. Very important, your hook set. When swinging streamers in the current, you must have the tools to be properly prepared for any situation you run into. Whether you run into shallow water, fast water, or deep turbulent water, you must be prepared. For the most part, in most streams that you're going to run into that are shallow, a floating line will do. Simply add a little split shot to your leader or use a, a weighted fly itself will work fine in shallow water. The second, if you run into turbulent deep water, you might want to try a sinking, uh, full sinking line itself. And they come in different sink rates and they're marked on the package. Have a spare spool with one of these lines on so you, you can change over at any given time. Another thing that, that is on the market is called a quad tip. And the convenience here is you got one fly line on but with four different tips. You got a sinking line, you got a clear intermediate line, and you got a floating line. Very convenient. But in the case that you know the situation that you're running into, you can actually buy sinking leaders at different rates and, and match it to the situation that you have. So the, these will be marked on the package also as far as how fast they sink. pull and swam with it for a minute and then turn. All right! Oh, oh and it's running at me again. Oh, they're famous for that. Thank God for large arbor reels. Oh, and Randy's hung up on the bottom, so I'm gonna have to be ginger about this. This fish just went for a big run. Now he's, he's coming right back at me again. And these large arbor reels that are invaluable for this, Okay, now oh, yes. Oh, oh man, I'm <laughs> strong fish. It's good fish. This is a really good fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This side, <clears throat> it's a good fish. This is a very good fish. Now Randy is telling me that these fish turn off and on like, like a, a clock. It, uh, come on over there and get her in the boat, in there. And we got her, all right. And that's a good fish. <laughs> oh, he's tagged too, old tag. Really old. Is this Can one tagged? Yep. Yeah, I can hardly see it. Now I can see it really well. 5280. You see how they, the algae gets growing around it, and some people catch them and don't even realize they're tagged, so. Oh, that's a big boy. 22 and a quarter. All right! <laughs> <laughs> Now, another fine example 
of a brook trout in the Nipigon area. I want to thank the town of Red Rock and Nipigon for having us up here. This is absolutely spectacular fishing. Uh, make sure you, you put it on your next fishing trip. It, it's just a wonderful, wonderful industry here. And we'll see. And away he goes. Gotta love it. Oh man, that water is cold. <laughs> That's very, very cold water. Oh yeah. When swinging streamers, it's extremely important to have a proper rod. What you want is a fast taper, stiffer action rod. The reason for this, you're gonna be casting weighted systems, such as full sink lines, sink tip lines, sinking leaders, and weighted flies. Your nice, soft, dry fly action rod won't work here. It's not strong enough. Also, in addition, you'll have more hooking power and be able to twitch the fly properly. The technique of swinging flies has been used for centuries to fish for Atlantic salmon. Watch as I use these techniques in Labrador on the Eagle River to catch these acrobatic fish. Regulations in Labrador dictate that no weight is to be used on the line or in the fly. The use of a riffle hitch will cause the fly to wake on the surface, thus attracting the fish. The technique of swinging the fly in the current is the same. Typical areas that will hold fish are seams. Seams are where two currents of differing speed meet. Fish will hold in the slower areas but very close to where the fast water is. Rocks will also break the current and cause a seam, and these are particularly good fish holding areas. Running right at me. Okay. Okay, I gotta, gotta get him on the reel. Yeah, he'll be on the reel in a second. Nice thing about these reels is you can spin them up fast. Always got it around the front. Anchor rope, anchor rope. I got lucky. I got lucky. I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that fish went right underneath the anchor on me. I had to stick the tip of my rod underneath the boat. <laughs> that was a little scary. It's been uh, a better night, that's for sure. Here we go, yes sir. This is incredible. This went right into my backing, this is incredible. Here we go, I'm getting my line back. He's coming back towards me. Labrador, this place to be if you like this kind of fishing. Strong, powerful fish, it's gotta come. Goose Bay Outfitters, very, very, very nice place. Great food, good people. Oh yes. Okay, I feel like he's t starting to tire a bit. Either him or I'm getting tired. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, and we got another fish that's active in the area. Oh, this is this is wonderful. Just wonderful. Oh. Got your glove there, George? Oh, we're not ready yet, I know that. <laughs> but he has popped his head up. Oh yeah. Very good. Now, let me have a hold of him there, sir. Oh yes. And that nice one, that's a good one. That is incredible. Doesn't look that big, but you seen he went into my backing. Just a wonderful, wonderful fishery here. Incredible. 
Okay, George, if I can get beside you, I'm just gonna revive him. Yeah, revive him. You're down the water. Yep. <coughs> okay. Keep him in the side of the water. Hand on the outside. Put your hand on the outside. Yep. Get all the air. Okay. Revive him completely. Now we have a, a, a hitch uh, type of knot on the fly which makes it ride right up near the top. So that was pretty exciting when I seen the fish come up and grab it. And I had to give it a, about a second before I set the hook to make sure that he had it. Actually, uh, our guide actually seen the fish before I did. I felt it more and then I seen it roll at the top. But right there, that indicates there's a, there's a rock and Atlantic salmon are drawn to structure the same with, as any, of migrata any migratory fish does. So you want to find the seams, and easy to find a seam is just follow the bubble lines, and that'll indicate where the seams are. Man, you don't miss the hits as far as there's nothing subtle. Nothing subtle about it at all. Yeah, you can't take your mind off these fish for a second. Yeah. And I got this one near the surface. So that was kind of exciting. And this fish is gonna come up in a second here and you're gonna get a look at it. Oh yeah, it's decent, decent fish, yes. All right, this is great. And I'm gonna step back. And I'll get him in sideways here. Now George seen that come up before I did. He says you got one, Bill, and that's when I felt it hit. And we got ourselves a fish here. Now, George is gonna handle the fish and he's gonna revive it a little bit. I'm really, really, really happy with that. And away she goes, yes sir. Well, these are the gloves on, so you feel the water. That's fine. That's fine. That's, uh, that was exciting. We got here within five minutes. I had my first one on, but I wasn't lucky enough to get that one. I was more successful with that one. Man, what a spectacular fish! Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and understand how effective swinging streamers can be. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the net at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next week. Looking for world-class fishing at reasonable prices? Want the best of bass, brook trout, pike, and walleye fishing that is easily accessible? Then come to the Algoma region in Northern Ontario. Easy to access by road, plane, or even train, Algoma features some of the best fishing in the world. To learn more, go to algomaregion.com or call toll-free 1-800-263-2546.